Here's an example using histograms. I generated this histogram in Excel and I used, chose my own bins so that it has nice uh, round numbers here at the bottom on the, vertic on the horizontal axis. And uh, recall, one problem with Excel is that these labels actually are shifted to the left. So this 6 actually represents this tick mark, although it's plotted uh, in the middle. This range of values, this bar, represents the values between 5 and 6, for example. So let's answer some of these questions. How many data points have a voltage less than or equal to 6 volts? Well, that would be all the values lower than this line here at 6 volts. So there's 5 values between 4 and 5, and there's 10 between 5 and 6. So we would write 5 plus 10 equal 15. It's 15 values between 5 and 6. Part B, how many data points have a voltage that lies between 6 and 8 volts? Well, again, 6 is here, 8 is here, so we would add these two, and those both happen to have 14 points in each of those bins, so for part B, we would write 14 plus 14 equal 28. Part C, how many data points have a voltage that lies between 3 volts and 10 volts? 3 volts is here, 10 volts is here. So basically it's everything that has a bar. In other words, all the data, you can add all these up and get 50, or we look at the fact that we had 50 voltages to begin with. So part C, all of them, in other words, 50 data points. Part D says, what is the probability in percent that a given reading lies between 5 and 6 volts? So again, looking at our histogram, 5 volts is here, 6 volts is here. So we want this particular bin, which has 10 readings out of 50. So the probability, or the, fre the frequency we call, is 10, the number of data points. The frequency is 10 for x technically lying between 5 and 6 this way, so x is greater than 5 but less than or equal to 6. And so the probability that x lies, that any reading lies in that value range, in that range, is frequency divided by n, which would be 10 over 50, the total number of points, which would be 0 0.20 or 20%. Part E, when we transform the vertical axis from frequency to f of x, which is a vertically normalized histogram, let's calculate f of x for the bin that's labeled 6 on the horizontal axis. Well, the bin that's labeled 6 is this bin here, which actually has values of x from 5 to 6, and therefore the midpoint is 5.5 of that bin. Uh, and therefore we would write f of x equal the probability divided by delta x. And the probability is the frequency divided by n delta x. The frequency is the number of data points in that bin between 5 and 6. That's 10. n is 50. And the bin width delta x is 1, which we can see from the plot. The difference between 5 and 6, or 6 and 7, the width of these bins is 1, therefore delta x is 1, and we get 0 0.20 equal our f of x. Now the x itself, we would call the midpoint of that bin, which would be 5.5, halfway between 5 and 6. Finally, let's do part f. Sample mean is 6.76, sample standard deviation is given 1.31. Let's transform to uh, a normalized PDF. So we're going to transform the vertically normalized f of x into a PDF and then into a normalized PDF. And we're going to calculate the value of f of z for x equal 8.5. So to do this, we do the following. At x equal 8.5, f of x is frequency, this is similar to the previous part of the problem, frequency over delta x, in this case six data points 
over 50, delta x is 1, so we get 0 0.120 as our f of x at x equal halfway in the bin, which is 8.5. So we're talking about this bin here between 8 and 9, which has six data points, and 8.5 is the halfway mid value of those two extremes. So that's our f of x. To get uh, z, to transform this into z, z is equal to, by definition, x minus mu over sigma. Well, we don't know the population mean or the population standard deviation. What we do know is the sample mean and the sample standard deviation, x bar and s. So we'll use those values as an approximation. 8.5 is our x, 6.76 is our mean, and 1.31 is our sample standard deviation. So this gives us 1.33, that's our z value. And then finally, f of z is equal to sigma times f of x, which is approximately s times f of x, since we don't know sigma. We know s. So this would be 1.31 times 0 0.120, and that gives us 0 0.1572, which I would approximate to three digits, f of z is 0 0.157.